On today's episode of Saz Talks Money, we're covering the top business people of 2020. Who do you think is the top business person of the year? I want to get your opinion. Put that in the comments section. I want to know who you think is number one. I think we can all agree that 2020 has changed the game of business. They say there is a new normal in life, but there's also a new normal in business. The people on this list, at the top of this list, are a direct reflection of what companies succeeded during the pandemic and what CEOs put their companies in a position to succeed. So why should you pay attention to this episode? Let me tell you, the people at this list are a clear indication of where the economy is headed in 2021 and beyond. And spoiler alert, Sears is not on this list. So let's start with number 20 and work our way up to number one, the top spot. Who do you think it will be the business person of the year? Let's talk money. talk is money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. Let's start with number 20. Her name is Cynthia Warner. She is the CEO of Renewable Energy Group. Well, we all know that the energy sector took a major hit this year. Why? Because we've all been staying home due to lockdowns, due to COVID. But what she has been able to do is she's been able to lead the efforts of North America's largest producer of biodiesel and low carbon fuels to focus on reducing CO2 emissions. That's good for the environment. Respect to Mrs. Warner. Number 19 is Bruce Broussard. He is the CEO of Humana. We all know that Humana is a major health insurance carrier. Mr. Broussard led the push into the Medicare Advantage business, far outpacing the rest of the industry. But most importantly, during the pandemic, they were at the forefront of COVID testing, treatment, and benefits. Number 18 is Adina Friedman. She is the CEO of the NASDAQ. You may remember her from my NASDAQ Gone Woke episode as she's heading up NASDAQ's diversity inclusion campaign. But listen, when it comes to business, the NASDAQ is no joke. It has become the go-to stock exchange for companies going public, handling two-thirds of U.S. IPOs in 2020, which includes Snowflake, Uber, and Airbnb. That is some big business for the NASDAQ. Number 17 is Daniel Zhang. He is the CEO of Alibaba. Now, a lot of us know Jack Ma, who was the founder of Alibaba, but Zhang is responsible for the Chinese tech giant's profound growth and implementing a successful blend of online and brick and mortar shopping. Zhang was also the key architect of Singles Day, the online shopping festival that racked up $75 billion in sales this year. It's not so bad to be single. Number 16 is Sasan Gudarzi. He is the CEO of Intuit. Now, if you're not familiar with Intuit, you're probably familiar with some of their products, which include TurboTax, QuickBooks, and Mint. Now, I'm a big fan of Mint, so shout out to Sasan for what he's doing with the business. Now, what he's also done has kept the company innovative and AI-driven, and he's put Intuit as a longtime fixture into Fortune's ranking of the 100 best companies to work for. Number 15, her name is Kristen Peck. She is the CEO of Zoe Edis. Zoe Edis is a company that is all about animal health and they had a huge 2020. And why is that? It is because during lockdowns, more people were spending more time with their pets and adopting more pets, but they also spun off from Pfizer and they make vaccines and medications for animals. Number 14 is Julie Sweet. She is the sweet CEO of Accenture. They are a professional services giant. They specialize in business and management consulting. Now what sets them apart is they are hyper focused on disruptive tech, including cloud, digital, and security. Number 13 is David Powers. He is the man in power as the CEO of Decker's Outdoor. If you're not familiar with Decker's Outdoor, you're probably familiar with some of their shoe brands, which include UGG, Tiva, and Hakka11. Powers has put some serious Pep in the step of Deckers as the shoe business has grown 250% over the last three years. Number 12 is Peter Wenink. He is the CEO of ASML Holding. They are a very technical company, so bear with me as I get very techy here. What they do is they are a massive supplier of lithography technology and extreme ultraviolet used in the semiconductor industry. Say that three times fast. Just know that it's a technology is used by tech giants Intel and Samsung. I had to Google most of that, so I understand if you have to do the same. Number 11 is Ken G. He is the CEO of Fortinet. It kind of sounds like fortunate, but all I know is they are making a fortune in the cybersecurity business. In fact, their customers include 70% of the Fortune 100 businesses, including Alibaba, 
Siemens, and Volkswagen. The stock has returned 190% over the last three years. That is very fortunate. We have now officially entered the top 10 business people of the year. And let's start with number 10. Her name is Trisha Griffith. She is the CEO of Progressive. We all know Flo from Progressive. We see her in all the commercials. But Trisha Griffith is the real boss of Progressive. She is one of the most powerful women in business. And she was the business person of the year two years ago in 2018. Progressive stock has tripled since she took over as CEO in 2016. They are flowing. Number nine is AJ Benga. He is the CEO of MasterCard. He is well known in the industry for being a deep dude and a proven leader. Few CEOs have managed to implement a better work-life balance within the company culture. MasterCard prides itself on generous employee benefits, environmental sustainability, and helping a billion unbanked people around the globe. Number eight is Shantanu Narayan. You've probably never heard of this gentleman's name, Shantanu Narayan. But let me tell you, if you've ever used a PDF before, then you know his company because his company is Adobe. Now, Adobe is a massive provider of design and publishing tools, software for documents, and of course, the ever popular e-signature. Number seven, let's see who number seven is. Number seven, his name is Jeff Bez, Jeff Bez, Jeff Bezos. Okay, Jeff Bezos. We all know who Jeff Bezos is. He is the founder and CEO of Amazon. We've all shopped on Amazon. We know that Amazon is a one and a half trillion dollar company. We all know that Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world. So rich that his ex-wife, Mackenzie Scott, is worth $60 billion and she's giving billions of dollars away to charity. But what you may not know about Amazon is they've hired nearly a half a million new employees this year. So if you're looking for a job, Amazon is hired. Number six is Leonard Schleifer. He is the CEO of Regeneron. Now, if that name sounds familiar, that's because that is the famous drug that President Trump would tout to use to fight COVID. He would always say Regeneron, 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 and that's what he used to fight COVID. They are the biotech company that's been celebrated for developing the COVID drug, but also for the first ever FDA approved drug to treat Ebola. Those innovations have helped boost Regeneron stock big time. Number five is Elizabeth Gaines. She is the CEO of Fortescue Metals Group. They are a global leader in the iron ore and mining industry. Now Gaines received credit for implementing safeguards to ensure that there has been zero cases of COVID at their mining sites. Pretty impressive despite that their main market is being in China. Kudos to her. Number four is Reed Hastings. He is the CEO of Netflix. Now, if you've ever Netflix and chilled, well, you have Reed Hastings to thank. And during the pandemic, people were doing a lot of that. On the business side of things, Netflix was a big winner this year, hitting a new annual record for subscribers. Number three is Jensen Juan. He is the CEO of NVIDIA. Now, listen, if you like playing video games, then you have NVIDIA to think. They have the fastest graphics processing chips for video games, but it's not just video games. Nvidia overtook Intel as the most valuable US chip maker due to branching out into AI, data analysis, cloud computing, and mining cryptocurrency. Number two is Lisa Su. She is the CEO of Advanced Micro Devices, or AMD. AMD has reached the pinnacle of computer processing. They produce computer chips, flash memories, graphic processors, electronics, and the latest big one, 5G mobile devices. That's Lisa Soup. It is now time for number one. Can I get a drum roll, please? And your number one business person of the year is none other than Elon Musk. This guy does it all. He is the CEO and founder of Tesla. SpaceX, The Boring Company, Neuralink, and OpenAI. That is a lot of business. This year alone, Tesla was added to the S&P 500 and is one of the world's most valuable companies. His other company, SpaceX, the rocket company, soared to new heights, teaming up with NASA and successfully sent humans into orbit. The man dreams big, and as they say, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. His star is shining bright as he saw his net worth skyrocket to nearly 150 
billion dollars, making him the second richest man of the world. Elon is the good kind of crazy and he is absolutely killing it. And that's why he is the number one top business person of the year. So that's the list of the top 20 business people of the year. Congrats to Elon Musk for being number one. Now, let me give you my biggest takeaways of this episode. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that one third of the people on this list were actually ladies. So congrats to all the lady bosses out there. I expect more ladies to be on this list moving forward. What were your biggest surprises on this list? Now, speaking of surprises, let's talk about the biggest snubs. Who do you think was left off this list? For me, there's one person that stands out and his name is Eric Juan. He is the CEO of Zoom. I think he should have been on this list. I don't know, everybody was using Zoom this year. We're all social distancing. Kids couldn't go to school. They were Zooming into class. Zoom was the talk of the town. And Eric Wan ended up a multi-billionaire this year. So for me, he was the biggest snub. And last but not least, do you think Elon Musk can defend his title in 20? 21 we shall see so that's it that's the end of this episode if you like this episode i want you to check out this episode right here which is the world's wealthiest people check that out right here and you can see that elon musk was basically towards the bottom of the top 10 in that list and now he's number two so respect to him if you enjoy this episode subscribe to value tim and economics below and give that like a little smash right there and as always save that money all we talk is money. All we talk is money.